Hey there, EDC enthusiasts. Welcome back to part two of our All Apple EDC Challenge. For the past two weeks, I've been living with an EDC consisting entirely of Apple products. I'm excited to tell you about my experience so you can decide if an All Apple EDC is right for you. Overall, this All Apple EDC worked well as a tech-centered, minimalist EDC. I didn't have major issues during the challenge, but some of the items worked better than others. As you might guess, the tech-focused products were the top performers. It should be no surprise that the iPhone was both the most useful and most heavily used component of this EDC. I've used it for well beyond the two-week minimum because it's been my daily driver since I got it. The iPhone is of course multifunctional and has moved way past the iconic original description of an iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. The iPhone can now also function as wallet, ruler, note taker, and so much more. It really is an essential part of my EDC. Of course, there are many other smartphones available, but none is so central to a tightly integrated ecosystem as the iPhone. It's like comparing apples and oranges, I mean Androids. If the iPhone is the most essential part of this EDC, Apple's iPhone case is the least essential. Of course, some people don't even use a case, but if you do, there are many cases out there to choose from. Still, if you value a perfect fit and minimalistic aesthetics and are willing to invest to get the Apple logo, an Apple iPhone case is a solid choice. I liked the Apple Wallet with MagSafe but with some caveats. It's definitely slim and minimal, so it could be a great option for people who are looking to take a minimalist approach to EDC. Since I prefer a minimalist EDC, the limit of having three cards was not an issue for me. This is especially true since I can use Apple Pay with the iPhone and Apple Watch most of the time. However, over the longer term it may not be as practical. At the very least it may require having a backup wallet to carry additional cards or cash on days when you need more than three cards with you. While it doesn't have a dedicated spot for cash, it hasn't been an issue for me personally. But if you tend to use cash frequently, you would either need to remove one card to allow room for cash or choose a different wallet. The attachment via MagSafe is a handy feature that allows for the iPhone and wallet to be carried as one unit. The magnetic connection is pretty strong and I haven't had an issue with the wallet becoming unattached without my knowledge. If it did, the Find My Alert would let you know. It would be nice if the alert happened within a few seconds so you could know very soon after it detached. While this Find My capability is nice, it doesn't have real-time tracking like the AirTag does. Maybe the slim form factor makes it hard to put a battery in to allow for AirTag-like tracking, but it would be great if Apple could make it work. Moving on to the AirTag keyring, the main benefit is what the keyring holds, rather than the keyring itself. I guess you could say that about pretty much any keyring since the keys they hold are the key reason you have it. But in this case, the AirTag is also a major feature. You'll never want to need it, but if you do lose your keys, you'll be glad to have it. Fortunately, I didn't lose my keys during the two-week challenge, but having the AirTag on the key ring definitely gave me peace of mind. For the key ring itself, I missed having a key organizer that helps prevent the keys from jingling. Now let's talk about audio. Apple makes a range of headphones, but for this challenge, I've been using the AirPods Pro 2. These provide the best audio experience from Apple from a product that can still fit in the pocket. The sound quality is fantastic, and the noise cancellation is even better than the first generation of AirPods Pro. The AirPods Pro tips provide a better fit for me than the regular AirPods. For the case, it's helpful to have a speaker built in that provides audible feedback for charging and can be used to help you find them if they are lost. The battery life is impressive for the size, with up to six hours of listening with active noise cancellation, and the battery life was not an issue with my routine daily use. When it does need a recharge, it can charge via a lightning, or USB-C cable, depending on the model. It can also be charged wirelessly. With the excellent audio experience, ease of integration into the Apple ecosystem, and small form factor for pocket carry, the AirPods Pro 2 make a great addition to the All Apple EDC. The Apple Watch is also an integral piece of the All Apple EDC. Of course, it tells time, but it also has many other features including health and fitness, as well as providing information and notifications at a glance. All the Apple Watches offer fitness tracking and basic health metrics, like heart rate monitoring. So, in the end, the all-Apple EDC held up to real-world testing for two weeks. 
and I was able to use it without relying on other EDC gear to supplement it. So this challenge was a success. But even though it is possible, would I recommend an all-Apple EDC? For most people, I would not. Not surprisingly, the more tech-oriented gear, like the iPhone, AirPods Pro, Apple Watch, and AirTag, are excellent EDC items. However, Apple's versions of more traditional EDC items, such as the wallet and keyring, are relatively expensive for what they are, and lack features that EDC enthusiasts may value, such as increased capacity for the wallet, and a true key organizer instead of a key ring. But for diehard Apple fans with a minimalist approach to EDC, the all Apple EDC might be the perfect combination. If you've enjoyed this EDC challenge, please subscribe for more EDC gear videos. And if you have any EDC challenges you'd like to see us take on, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.